Now, there is some growing concern about the fate of this year's coming Olympics in Japan. The WHO was also asked that and whether the COVID-19 virus could impact the Games. The WHO said that there are currently no plans to stop the Games from going ahead. We have a lot of experience in supporting mass gatherings before in the midst of Olympics, like uh, during the Zika outbreak, during the previous <clears throat> SARS outbreak and the Special Olympics and many others. And uh, if you cast your mind back to those events, many of those events went ahead with appropriate risk management. The Tokyo 2020 Committee and the Japanese government take the issue very seriously. Uh, so do the IOC. And uh, I think everyone is working together to try and preserve what is a fantastically important global event. The WHO also said that there are risk management plans being developed for mass gatherings of any kind. Joining me now is Norm O'Reilly. He's a professor and director at the University of Guelph's International Institute for Sport Business and Leadership. Good morning, Norm. Good to see you. So uh, WHO was asked pointedly today about the Olympics and whether or not they would go ahead. And they said that they were working with the IOC. But right now, no decision has been made. What is your feeling? At what point do you think a decision does need to be made about whether or not these games can go ahead? Yeah, it, it's obviously I have no in, inside information, but having been involved with many major events, it's your last, your last case scenario would be to cancel, and they would look at every alternative they could before that. The thing that's important to remember is there's a number of constituents or stakeholders to make that decision, the largest of which is not really the IOC, it's the local organizing committee. So when an Olympic Games is hosted, there's the Tokyo 2022 organization that's invested tons of money, government, public, private sector, that's putting on the event, is planning for stuff, made major investments as thousands of staff. They win the sanctioning rights from the IOC. So the IOC is clearly involved, but the Tokyo 2022 would be really the, in my view, the primary decision maker of when they would make some action if they ever would, if a pandemic arose. Okay, the Euro 2020 tournament is also set to take place in June. It is the Union of European Football Associations, I guess, that would decide whether or not to cancel that event? Yeah, same, same point. That's an event that's run by, yeah, the European Association of all those countries that are part of, of part of Euro. And they would make that decision. And they have a staff and a board and the leadership that are obviously looking at this very closely would be getting world-class medical advice like we just heard mm -hmm. uh, to make that decision. But with the investments that go in, this would be a last case scenario to, to cancel. Now, we've heard others talking about alternatives. Do you delay the games either case slightly? Do you reduce the number of spectators? There's been instances in the past where soccer games have been played in front of empty stadiums, not for health reasons, but for safety reasons, for terrorism threats. And so there's there's many alternatives, but the athletes want to compete. The fans want to have the event. The, the, the largest proponent by far of people that watch Olympics and Euro and mega events like that are watching via streaming and television, and they're not there in person. So there's a number of alternatives that could come to play uh, that could still see these events happen. Obviously, that's not ideal, but I think that would be their very, very last choice. The amount of money that's been invested, uh, do you delay the games for a, a year or a couple of months if something got bad enough? But hopefully our, our systems are, are strong enough, like we just heard uh, in Canada, mm -hmm. To, to control the pandemic and, and the athletes who've been investing their time, people who've planned their trips uh, are able to kind of go forward and, and the games will happen, both of, both of those events. So we're already seeing top European soccer matches play in empty or close to empty stadiums. How much money do these leagues stand to lose? How big of a blow is this for teams? It's, it's a great question and it's really an answer of it depends. And for the highest level, if you think of an NFL or an EPL or La Liga, it's it's quite modest. Ticket sales are quite a modest proportion of the revenues. Media is really driving what they're doing, but it looks bad, and it's and it's not good in a long term scenario. If you drop down a level, to your point, uh, tickets become vitally important. So if you go to that next tier of sporting events, a lower level. Premier League club, or in Canada, if you thought about the Canadian Football League or the National Lacrosse League, one of those, tickets are the vast majority of their revenue. So anyone that's not in that elite tier that's generating those billion-dollar media contracts, it hurts really badly, and the owners and the leagues would be taking significant losses. Okay. Would you continue to go to a sporting event with mass crowds, Norman? 
I'm continuing to travel and I'm continuing to do do my stuff. I'm fortunate. I'm I'm in my mid 40s and I'm in I'm pretty good health. I think if I was 74 and w w my health wasn't perfect, I would really look at that a little bit differently. Um, as the as who has come out and said and as medical experts talk about, and, and it's practicing that hygiene that we're all supposed to practice. That's what who is telling us right now, right? So if you're being careful. Like any time you travel in any virus, it's obviously something that's in top of our mind, but it hasn't stopped me anyways, personally, from my travel. Okay. Norman O'Reilly, professor and director at the University of Guelph's International Institute for Sport Business and Leadership. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.